guys, welcome back to my channel. Horror movies can elicit many emotional responses. Sadness, fear, happiness, and more. The horror genre can be very therapeutic and serve as kind of a cathartic experience for someone who's going through a traumatic time in their life or experiencing something difficult like the loss of a loved one. Personally, I love horror movies that tap into this theme and I decided to create a list of some of my favorite horror films revolving around loss, grief, and the feelings that come with it and what happens to the individuals who are left behind. First is Relic from 2020. When her demented mother Edna goes missing, Kay, played by Emily Mortimer and her daughter return to her remote home to find her only to discover that she's locked inside and there's a mysterious black substance taking over the home and possibly the mother's mind. On the surface this movie is a haunted house horror but when you peel back those layers it's a haunting portrayal of dementia and the people who are experiencing it as well as the people who have to care for them. There are strong themes of guilt in this film from Kay the daughter. She feels very guilty for not being in her mother's life more. She she was very neglectful and they had a very strange relationship. So as she's nearing this point in her, her mother's life, she's very guilty that she wasn't there more. This is an atmospheric, slow burn, psychological thriller with some really trippy moments and heartbreaking, heartbreaking imagery. It's extremely sad at times and it made me bawl my eyes out. I, I really enjoyed this one, but I don't think I can watch it again for a very long time. Next is The Babadook from 2014. In The Babadook, a single mother who is plagued by the traumatic death of her husband struggles with raising her son who is terrified of a sinister monster lurking in their home known as the Babadook. Over the course of this film, the mother becomes increasingly stressed and exhausted with having to care for her son who is going through his own traumas and difficulties. And eventually, she starts to see the monster too and may even start becoming her own kind of monster in the process. There are strong themes of loss, depression, and resentment in this film and the other dark monsters that can fester when you let grief overpower you rather than dealing with it. The outstanding performance from Essie Davis as a mother who is slowly letting her grief basically overtake her. She becomes something or someone she can't even recognize. Feels so genuine and so real and it's absolutely terrifying. And while a lot of people have complained about the son in this film being annoying, I think that the actor did a fantastic job portraying a child who is acting out for help. He's acting out for attention from his mother eh, because he's afraid of being abandoned by her. He's lost his father and now he's losing his mother and this is how he copes. So I think a lot of people misunderstood the son's role in this movie and I didn't find him annoying at all. I found it heartbreaking. This film has some well-timed scares, some really, really creepy imagery, and some very hard to watch moments between a mother and son struggling with their relationship. Next is Hereditary from 2018. Hereditary is a film that opens with the death of a very secretive family matriarch and examines how her daughter and grandchildren deal with that loss. There are very strong themes of bereavement in this film and it's absolutely traumatizing. There are some really traumatizing scenes of Toni Collette grieving the loss of a loved one where she's just literally on the ground screaming asking to die because she just can't go on anymore and those moments were just so disturbing to watch, so uncomfortable, so real and it felt like I was seeing a genuine intimate moment that I wasn't supposed to see and that moment in the film hit me really hard. I had a heavy feeling in my chest for days after this. I felt like watching this movie, I was mourning the loss of a loved one as well. And I still haven't rewatched this movie from the first time I saw it in theaters because that that broke me. My, my chest was so heavy. That feeling sometimes is a little too hard for me to revisit right away. And it's just too realistic. Despite the craziness that also occurs in the film that's kind of over the top. This movie is very unnerving, it's very bleak. However, I think it perfectly depicts loss and mourning and grief. I feel like you can't go through this movie without experiencing 
some of the emotions that the characters are experiencing too. Next is Midsummer from 2019. Another Ari Aster film, Midsummer follows a group of friends whose idyllic trip to a Midsummer festival in Sweden turns into a nightmare when the true sinister intentions of the community are revealed. This film has one of the most disturbing opening scenes I've ever watched in a really long time. We have a character who experiences a very, very traumatic loss and she has an extreme emotional response to that, like Toni Collette in Hereditary. It's similar to the scene in Hereditary where it's a very intimate moment and it's it lingers on this moment for a really long time. You experience the pain and the sadness along with the character as, as she's mourning. And it's difficult, it's horrific, and then the movie takes off from there. So an opening like that really sets the tone for the for the rest of the film. I was like, geez, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this if this is what it's gonna be like. But it kind of switches tone after that. But we follow this character who is essentially, she's avoiding dealing with her problems or she's choosing to deal with her problems in a different way. She's choosing to run from them, go on this trip because she thinks it's gonna make her feel better. And in a way, I guess it kind of does. She learns things about herself, I guess you could say. But then again, she's also avoiding a lot of things, a lot of other things, like having an honest conversation with her boyfriend about the state of their relationship. And I feel like she chooses unhealthy coping mechanisms in this film. Florence Pugh in this movie, she's playing an extremely vulnerable emotional character and I feel like she shows every emotion in her eyes and on her face. Like without even saying a word, you know how her character's feeling and I think she's phenomenal in this movie. It's heart wrenching to watch her go through the motions of this film and just know that she's in so much pain. Her her performance is so, so nuanced in this and we see her f experience many different emotions and it's truly beautiful to watch. Next is His House from 2020. His House is a film about two South Sudan refugees who flee their war-torn country and seek asylum in the UK. They're provided with a dilapidated government-issued housing and the place is haunted. While this is a haunted house story, it's also layered with themes of loss, guilt, and trauma, which manifest in the form of apparitions. The film is filled with some really haunting imagery and truly horrific flashback moments where we are learning the history of this of these two characters and what happened to them in their home country. And they take that baggage with them to the UK, but they choose to try to push it away, hide it underneath this facade. They're trying to assimilate to their new living situation and trying to be happy. But as most of us know, sometimes you can't just push your traumas down. The trauma will always follow you and eventually it can try to kill you. There are also themes of acceptance in this. Acceptance is not impossible and it's something that's very important to have in the in the grieving process in order to move on. This film is a very emotional journey and it's a moving film that takes the viewer on a harrowing, real, realistic journey of trauma and the guilt that can come with that. Next is Vigil from 2019. The Vigil follows a young man who agrees to fulfill the duties of a shomer, the ritualistic practice of looking after a dead body over the course of one night. What seemed easy turns into a nightmare filled with haunting visions and an evil force festering within the home. So this film's protagonist experienced a very traumatic event in his past and he is trying to just move on from that. But he's not doing a good job because he didn't actually deal with what happened and he's feeling a lot of guilt for what happened. The vigil is filled with suspense and some truly good scares, truly effective scares. The movie uses light or lack of it to really create moments of uneasiness and tension and its sound design adds to the creepiness and eerie atmosphere and the lead actor gives an incredible performance in this as a man who is haunted by his past. His character doesn't allow himself to feel happy or worthy of the life he is currently leading and it's his guilt is just overpowering his life. Over the course of the movie, he must learn to either accept what happened and move on or just let his grief overpower him and consume him entirely. Next is Pet Cemetery from 1989. Based on the Stephen King novel of the same name, Pet Cemetery follows a man named Lewis Creed who buries his son in a cemetery that brings things back to life. However, when they come back, 
they don't come back the same. This film is a haunting portrayal of loss, particularly a parent's loss of a child. It highlights the desperation of a parent or a loved one. They're willing to do whatever it takes, no matter the consequences, to bring that person back. Loss and grief can really cloud a person's judgment and they don't think clearly and they make poor decisions. They act irrationally and Pet Cemetery perfectly depicts that. It has truly, truly, truly chilling moments involving a child, including, you know, from a death and also an Achilles heel situation that has scarred me for life. It's scary. It's overall very disturbing images and themes in this movie. The film's strongest message in this is that if you don't accept your loss and allow yourself to grieve and move on, it will ultimately kill you. Next is The Haunting of Julia from 1977. After the unexpected loss of her daughter, a young woman relocates her life to a new home in London for a fresh start, but she soon realizes the beautiful home has dark secrets and she might not be alone. Mia Farrow stars as the mother in this film and I think she does an excellent job conveying that desperation and loneliness a mother would feel in this situation of traumatically losing your child. Her character so badly wants to believe that the paranormal activity she's experiencing in her new home is somehow connected to her daughter. And she goes to great lengths to prove that. And it even can put her into danger. The Haunting of Julia is a beautiful and atmospheric ghost story and mystery, and it's a unique portrayal of a mother's undying love for her child. Next is Don't Look Now from 1973. Don't Look Now follows a married couple still grieving over the accidental death of their daughter as they head to Venice, Italy for the husband's job. While there, the husband begins seeing glimpses of someone who looks like his daughter running through the streets of Venice. This film does an excellent job at portraying the effects that the loss of a child can have on a relationship and it really highlights the struggle between a married couple who are struggling to come with come to terms with their daughter's death and move on. This film is filled with so much apprehension and dread and has some extremely terrifying moments and it has Donald Sutherland. I love Donald Sutherland. It's dark and dimly lit. The setting just it creates just such an unsettling atmosphere. Like you never feel safe or okay in this. You're always expecting something. Something ominous is lingering in the air in this film. There's also several instances in this film of bad omens and little easter eggs that you can pick up upon rewatch that something bad is going to happen. You And they basically give you little clues throughout the movie. This is based on a Daphne du Maurier story and she's known as like the queen of gothic suspense and this story is just the epitome of that. Don't Look Now is a beautiful look at how damaging loss can be on the people left behind. And lastly is The Changeling from 1980. The Changeling follows a composer named John Russell played by George C. Scott who loses his wife and daughter in a tragic car accident. Grief stricken, he leaves his home and moves into a remote mansion where he soon discovers a haunting presence waiting for him inside. I absolutely love The Changeling. I love it so much and I only saw it recently a few years ago but I watch it every year around Halloween and even after that. I just always have the urge to come back to this movie because it's so beautiful and well made. And George C. Scott's performance is just... Mwah, it's just... It's, um, it's incredible. George C. Scott who is typically a, a loud and boisterous character. He's very subdued in this and he gives a very subtle performance and there's just several, several standout scenes in this movie that are carried by his performance. There's one scene in particular that breaks my heart. It's he's lying in bed one night and he's crying and it feels so real. It's again another instance where it's a moment that feels very intimate and like we as the audience aren't supposed to be seeing this and it just gives you an insight into his character and it just gives you a more of an idea of okay he's really going through this, he's struggling hard but he doesn't have to say it or do it. Like he's, he's showing you because he's breaking down and it just makes you connect with him more and feel for him and you want him to get through this. His character is very calm and level-headed throughout this movie. He doesn't react like a, a person you would typically expect a typical person to react in that situation. Like he doesn't go crazy, he doesn't try to escape, he tries to talk to the ghost and figure out what's going on. He uses the ghost that he's experiencing as his way to deal with his own loss. He's trying to solve this mystery of the ghost in his house and that's helping him through it. So that's his way of coping and dealing with his grief by solving the mystery of another person's death. So it's an interesting mourning process. I like the, the, the way that 
they showed his grief and mourning through him solving a mystery. And he's just so cool. Like, he's just so different than every other portrayal I've seen of this. There's also other really memorable moments in this movie, including a seance scene, which is just fantastic, and a scene where a ball rolls down the stairs, which I don't want to say too much, but it's creepy as hell. George C. Scott's performance is enough to see this movie. And there you have it. Those are some of my favorite films depicting themes of loss, mourning, grief, and trauma. Please let me know what you think of my list, if there are any films on this list that I didn't include, that you think should be on there. I would love to talk about it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time, guys. Bye.